Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Daily Live with Cohen Springer. Um, preparing for exams. Today, we're going to do some keep physics. We're actually going to look at a question from back in the day that can still be applied now. Um, this question is on kinetic theory of gases. Now, I teach physics in the student how about physics for CSEC level. At the keep level, I leave this up to Miss Amy Mohammed, who has a degree in physics and environmental physics. And she does a good job at the CAPE Unit 1 at the, at the student hub. So, Amy, the floor is yours. Hi, everyone. Well, today we are going to do June 2007, Paper 2, Question 9, right? And this question, it is from Module 3 in the syllabus, and it deals with ideal gases and the kinetic theory of gases. So, the kinetic theory of gases assumes that a gas is made up of many molecules or many small particles, and they move at random speed. So, when you hear kinetic, think about movement. So here we are dealing with the kinetic theory of gases. So then we are dealing with some movement of gas molecules. So the first part of the question here says, use the kinetic theory of gases to explain how the molecules inside a gas cylinder containing oxygen are able to exert a pressure. So we know that pressure is force over area. So some form of force have to be happening in this container. So let's just say, for example, we have a container here, right? So inside of this container, we have gas molecules. So the gas molecules will be bombarding the, the side of the walls. So these gas molecules will be moving at a constant speed or some speed they will be moving at. So when they move, they will bombard the wall of this container when they bombard the walls of this container there's a change in momentum because there's a change in direction so that change in momentum is the force that is exerted on the walls of the container because we know the force is equal to mv minus mu all over delta p and that is delta p the change in momentum over the time so that force is the change in momentum and remember I said that pressure is force over area. So the surface area will be the area of this container here. So we have our force and we have our area. So using the kinetic theory of gases to explain, as the question says, how a gas molecule or how the molecules inside a gas cylinder containing oxygen are able to exert a pressure is because when these oxygen molecules are in the gas cylinder, they will move. They will move with kinetic energy. While they are moving, they will bombard each other. They're not only bombarding each other, but they are also bombarding the side of the walls. When they bombard the side of the walls, there's a change in momentum because of the change in direction so that change in momentum will result in a force now to get the area the area will be the area of that container so pressure is equal to force over area and that is how using the kinetic theory of gases a pressure is exerted by molecules inside of a gas cylinder so if we were to write that we'll write it like this the cylinder will have many molecules of oxygen moving randomly Pressure is a measure of the frequency with which the molecules bombard the walls of the container. When the molecules bombard the walls of the container, they will experience a change in momentum because of the change in direction. The rate of change of momentum is force. This force divided by the area that the molecules bombarded is the pressure. So that is how you would answer part one of question nine. The next part of the question is why pumping in more oxygen increases the pressure inside it. Obviously, if you pump more oxygen inside of that same cylinder, then you are increasing the number of molecules. And if you are increasing the number of molecules in that said area, then you are increasing the amount of collisions, the amount of bombardment with the walls of the container will be more. So if there's more collisions, then there 
will be a greater force, a greater change in momentum and a greater force. So if there's a greater force in that same area, then there will be a greater pressure. So that is how we will have an increase in the pressure inside of the container. So why pumping in more oxygen increases the pressure inside of it? And with my explanation, this is how you will write it. So when more oxygen is pumped in, there will be more molecules in the same space moving at the same average speed if temperature is constant. So there will be more collisions per second with the walls of the container, hence greater force and hence greater pressure because there will be a greater force because there are greater change in momentum and that will contribute to a greater force because of the more collisions. So that is how you will answer part two of that question. Part C says, using the same kinetic theory of gases, explain why the pressure would increase if the cylinder were left in the sun for a long time. So we know the sun will generate some form of heat. And if the sun generates that form of heat, then that there will be an increase in energy. So it comes like the sun is the form of energy here. And if the cylinder is left in the sun, then there will be an increase in energy. So if there's an increase in energy, that means there will be an increase in movement. So if there's an increase in movement, then the pressure again will increase. So if there's an increase in movement, there are increase in collisions, there will be greater impact on the walls of the container. And if they have a greater impact on the walls of the container, they will have a greater change in momentum. A greater change in momentum will produce a greater force in the same area. So a greater force will lead to a greater pressure. So using the kinetic theory of gases, that is why if the container is left in the sun, the cylinder is left in the sun, the pressure will increase. And this is how you will answer it. If the cylinder is left in the sun, the temperature increases, just as I was saying. Hence, the molecules gain kinetic energy and move faster, thus colliding with the walls of the container more often. Hence, greater force, so greater pressure. So that there is how we use the kinetic theory to explain the movement of gas molecules in the cylinder, the oxygen molecules in the cylinder. Got it. So the first part of the question dealt with the kinetic theory of gases. So this question here deals with a cylinder contains 2.8 mole of oxygen at room temperature, 27 degrees Celsius, and the pressure inside of the cylinder is 4.5 by 10 to the 5 pascals. The temperature rises to 47 degrees Celsius with another 3.9 mole of oxygen is pumped into the cylinder. Find the new pressure inside of the cylinder. So in physics, we have different laws, right? We have um, Charles law, Boyle's law, pressure law, and the ideal gas law. So Charles law states that a volume of of fixed mass of gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature provided that the pressure is kept constant. So V1 on T1 is equal to V2 on T2, right? So we can say V on T is equal to some constant. Good. So that was Charles' law. Now Boyle's law states that the pressure of a fixed mass of gas is inversely proportional to its volume provided that the temperature is kept constant so this time temperature is being kept constant for Charles law the pressure is what kept constant so for Boyle's law we will say p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 so in other words we can say pv is equal to some constant so that's Charles law and the Boyle's law we also have something called the pressure law so the pressure law states that the pressure of a fixed mass of gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature providing that volume is constant so you see in one the temperature kept constant the pressure kept constant and now the volume is being kept constant in the pressure law so you will get p1 on T1 is equal to P2 on T2. So we can say P on T is equal to some constant. Now combining these three laws, we can say PV on T is some constant. So if we combine all of these three laws, the Charles law, Boyle's law, and pressure law, we will get P1, V1 on T1 is equal to P2, V2 on T2. 
right? And we know for, for in a general equation, we will get P, P on T is equal to R. So you can see that our constant is R. And R is our molar gas constant. And the quantity of that is 8.3 joules per mole per Kelvin, right? So that is a constant that will never change. And it's represented by R, our molar gas constant. And we know that our ideal gas equation is PV is equal to NRT, where N is our number of moles. So when you are dealing with gas, you talk about number of moles, number of molecules. So, that, so this information here will help us answer this question. Here. So they say a cylinder contains 2.8 moles. So I just said that N is the number of moles. So we can say N, N is equal to 2.8 moles of oxygen at room temperature 27 degrees celsius so we can say t1 is equal to 27 degrees celsius and remember we have to convert degrees celsius to kelvins so when we are converting degrees celsius to kelvins we add 273 so it will be 27 added to this to get our answer in kelvin and that will give us 300 kelvins now the said the pressure inside of the cylinder is this so we will say p1 is equal to that and the temperature rises to 47 degrees celsius so now if this pressure rise then this will be equal to t2 and again you have to add 273 to it to make it when we are dealing in physics we always convert our temperature from degrees celsius to kelvin because kelvin is our si unit that is what we use to measure temperature in physics right so if we add 47 47 added to that we will get 320 kelvin so when another amount 3.9 mole of oxygen is pumped so this time it's not just 3.9 amount of oxygen in that cylinder and neither is it 2.8 but it will be 3.9 added to the 2.8 and that will be 6.7 moles so in our second or in case two this is the amount of moles they will have that will be our n and so they told us find the new pressure inside of the cylinder so in other words they are trying to tell us to find p2 so they want us to find the new pressure inside of the cylinder so we have all our information we have n1 we have t1 we have the p1 we have T2, N2. So the only thing that is missing is P2. And they want us to find P2. So this is how you will go about answering this question. So with all the laws that we just talked about, Charles Law, Boyle's Law, and the Pressure Law, and where we, we made it combine the three laws into one, this is how we will go about answering. So we know N1 is equal to 2.8 mole of oxygen. We know T1 is equal to 27 degrees Celsius plus 273 will give us 300 kelvins. We know P1 is equal to 4.5 by 10 to the 5 pascals. All this information was given in the question. Me personally, I like to write down all the information they give me. So when I am working out the question, it's much easier to work out, right? Um, T2 is equal to 47 degrees Celsius plus 273, so that will give 320 kelvins. N2 is equal to the 3.9 plus 2.8, and that will be 6.7 moles. This is for the case 2, that's a new amount of moles, because they added 3.9 moles to that 2.8, right? So they want us to find P2. They want us to find the new pressure after this amount of moles was added in the cylinder. So we know the formula P1V is equal to P1V is equal to N1RT1, right? Because this was given from PV is equal to NRT. The reason why I'm leaving V as it is because it was a con it was a cylinder, so it's a constant volume, right? In that. So this is how we will go. So for case one, P1V is equal to N1RT1. So it's just a matter of substitution. So P1 is 4.5 by 10 to the 5 by the volume is equal to N1, which is 2.8. R, remember I told you R is our molar gas constant, which is 8.3 joules per mole per Kelvin, 3.1, that is and the temperature is t1 is 300 kelvin so let's just label this equation one now for case two 
Remember, we were given separate information, right? So for case two, it would be P2V is equal to N2RT2. So it's just a matter of substitution. We are, we are required to find P2 because they want to know the new pressure in that cylinder. So then P2V is equal to N2, which is 6.7 by our molar gas constant again, 8.31 by our new temperature which was 320 kelvin so we will call this equation two now in order to get rid of that volume we can divide equations so we will say equation two divided by equation one so equation two is p2v is equal to 6.7 by r by 320 divided by equation one, which was all of this. I, I am leaving R as it is. So we will get 4.5 by 10 to the 5 V is equal to 2.8 by R by 300. So if we divide this, you will see that the R's are canceled and the V's are canceled. So you will end up with P2 divided by 4.5 by 10 to the 5 is equal to 6.7 by 320 divided by 2.8 by 300. And all you have to do now is rearrange this equation where cross multiply and then rearrange this equation with a little bit of algebra and you will find P. And you should get P2 to be 1.15 by 10 to the 6. Pascals. When I say rearrange this equation, so if we work out this, so you will end up with P2 divided by 4.5 by 10 to the 5. If 6.7 multiplied by 320, you will get 2144, 2144. And if you multiply this at the bottom here, you will get 840. So all you have to do now is cross multiply, you will get 840 P2 when you cross multiply. 4.5 by 25 multiplied by 2.14, you will get this five. Okay, so let's just work out this first, right? So instead you cross multiply, you could just do this. 2,144 divided by 840, so you get P2 divided by 4.5 by 10 to the 5. When you divide that, you should end up with 2.552. So to get P2, all you have to do is multiply them and you will end up with P2 being 1.15 by 10 to the 6 Pascals. And that is how you go about answering this question. So you see how we combine Charles Law Boyle's or the pressure law and the ideal gas equation, PV is equal to NRT, to use it to find the pressure or the second pressure of the container when this amount of moles were added. So that is how we will go about answering this part of the question. So, so the first part of the question would have given you 10 marks. The first three questions were strictly theory. And then here you had to include the equations for the different laws to get your math set.